Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 82 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case that was done with Dr. Imder Ungi as part of the Zector 2017 meeting in Zeged in Hungary and was compiled by Judith Karaksoni. This was a patient that was 64 years old with stable angina who presented with uh, right coronary artery occlusion. He had normal ejection fraction and a positive stress test. His diagnostic angiogram demonstrated a proximal occlusion of the right coronary artery with filling of the PDA via collaterals from the LAD. The images here are from the dual injection and because of severe dampening of the right kite catheter, there was no undergrade injection. There is filling of the distal right coronary artery, which is a large caliber vessel. And this is done mainly via septal collaterals as well from some epicardial collaterals from the circumflex. The lesion was in the proximal right coronary artery. It was about 30 millimeters long. The distal vessel was of good quality. And there were both septal and epicardial collaterals from the LAD. Therefore, the plan was to start with undergrade wire escalation. And then if it didn't work, try retrograde crossing followed by undergrade dissection and reentry. A corset catheter was placed in the proximal right coronary artery and attempts were made to cross with a filtered XT guide wire. There was some progress after switching to a Kaya second, moving along the course of the vessel and dancing and sing. However, we were unable to advance any further, although we were getting close to the distal cap. Finally, the wire went in the subintimal space, which was encouraging. However, we then had significant difficulty advancing anything over this subintimal guide wire. The proximal occlusion was essentially a balloon and crossable occlusion. We did several attempts with a threader and small caliber balloons, but we were unable to cross and in the process we actually lost our wire position. We then did additional attempts to cross subintimal However, we had a significant difficulty reforming the knuckle a little more proximal of the occlusion. As a result, we decided to give a try to retrograde crossing as the collaterals appeared to be favorable. We had some uh, injection of the collateral showing some connection to the PDA. However, this was not connecting. Then we had difficulty entering into more distal collaterals. And unfortunately, despite surfing several of those collaterals, we were unable to go retrograde, which is something that happens in about one in five retrograde cases. As part of the problem, we had difficulty getting into the settles because of the retroflex takeoff, and we used the reverse guide wire technique in which a, in which a polymer jacketed wire is bent about three, millimeter, three centimeters from the tip and then advanced all the way into the target vessel. And then while it's pulled back, that's when uh, one attempts to cross the vessel. We even tried to enter the collaterals by using the Crusade dual lumen microcatheter, but eventually, after several attempts, we gave up. Instead, we did uh, the base technique, in which we inflated a large balloon in the proximal right coronary, right next to the Corsair microcatheter, and then advanced a polymer jacketed wire in a knuckled fashion subintimally into the mid right coronary artery. This is an example of base or balloon assisted subintimal entry in which the balloon creates some sort of dissection through which there is advancement of the subintimal guide wire which is supported by the very strong compression of the microcatheter from the balloon. We were then able to easily advance the Corsair all the way to the distal right coronary artery. We were, of course, subintimal as we knew, but we were moving in sync with the distal target vessel. Therefore, we advanced the Stingray LP all the way to the distal right coronary artery. We performed the stick and swap technique by sticking both uh, in the inferior proximal to the proximal marker as well as superior between the two markers, and then switching for a Pilot 200 guide wire which um, we tried on both ports, it didn't work well, we pulled it back, it didn't work, we pulled redirected, and now we have nice advancement into the distal true lumen. So successful re-entry with a double blind stick and swap technique in which we puncture on both sides and then switch for the pilot, which eventually finds its way in a distal vessel. Distal true lumen con position was confirmed with contralateral injection, and we then predilated the lesion. We delivered uh, 
uh, several drag eluting stents, which was quite challenging due to the calcification and tortuosity, but was successful using a guide liner, and then covered essentially all the way to the proximal right coronary with an excellent result and TIMI3 flow into the distal vessel. It was a long procedure with a, a little more over the four hours, but an excellent final result. This case provides several uh, uh, learnings. The first is that uh, persistence is key for complex CTO PCI. If things don't work in the initially selected approach, then changing is the way to go. Nevertheless, one must have an initial plan and then modify the plan according to the progress. When we have a balloon and crossover lesion, or a lesion with an ambiguous cap, the base technique and the power knuckle are very important to essentially create a new proximal cap and be able to cross this balloon and crossable lesions, followed by the entry, which is quite frequently done with double blind stick and swap technique. Thank you.